am. I'm having so much fun. I would love to be Alphaba in Wicked because obviously she's a very powerful belter and a very powerful role in the whole musical. Also, I would love to play Elle Woods in Legally Blonde because I think it's a role that not a lot of people get to play and it's definitely different than an Alphaba role. Would you call yourself a pageant girl? I don't think I'm the typical pageant girl. I think that I have a lot of different aspects about my life that make me not the typical pageant girl. I skateboard. I'm a sponsored skateboard rider, and I also do archery, and I hunt. So it's one of those things that I don't think I'm necessarily a normal pageant girl, but I do consider myself a pageant girl. What is a typical pageant girl? You know, I don't think you really have a definition for it because it's one of those things that it varies from person to person, and a lot of people have different stereotypes that they think that people have about us, but I don't think you can really define a pageant girl in one way. Your platform is play, play safe, play again. Have you ever had an accident to the point where you hurt your head? Yes, I have. When I was 10 years old, I got Heelys for Easter, and I was so excited, and I thought, you know, it's Heelys. I'm not going to get hurt. I was in the Six Flags parking lot, and I went down and I got road burn on all of the side of my face. And you can't see it today because I used Mederma and you know there was some certain scar techniques that my doctor told me to use, but it affected me and it still affects me today. So if I can prevent one person from having that experience, my platform is worth it. I've, uh, you know, I've, I do extreme sports. I, I race motocross and I've, I've been knocked out and concussed before. Um, I wish that I had, you know, The camp was great. I had to room with, okay, when I went the first time, there weren't any girls my age that skateboard. And there really, realistically, weren't any girls at all that skateboarded. So I was the only girl. So I roomed with a bunch of cheerleaders, and they were really excited to have the skater girl in their cabin. I got to work with a lot of professional coaches, and it, overall, the experience with the parks and the ramps, I got to drop off of the 14-foot with the vert. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> She bring you to Ryan Sheckler's. <laughs> Ryan Sheckler's a good friend of mine. He, he, does, uh, he does foundation work and stuff like that for injured athletes. So. How do you encourage more young ladies to get involved with the sport now? It's one of those things that I lead by example. If I can do it, somebody else can definitely do it. So it's one of those things that I go out there in my pink helmet, and my parents practically bubble wrap me. I wear my wrist guards, my elbow pads, my knee pads. I even have these big hips. So that way, if I go down and I hit my hip, I don't get hurt. What so. about the negative connotations of skater? So not necessarily, when, when people hear the word skater, they're thinking of a delinquent child or a delinquent young person who is, has no uh, ambitions in life but to skate right on the rails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you, how do you combat that negative connotation, the stereotype similar to what you experienced as a magic person? I try to explain to people that you're always going to have a bad seed in the group. You're always going to have that one person that causes trouble and gets a bad name for the entire group, like the pageant girl stereotype that we're all kind of did see and don't know what we're doing. So I explained to them that I'm a skateboarder and all of the things that I do and all of the wonderful experiences that I've had because of it. So I try to break it by leading through myself and showing them what I've accomplished. What are your views on, I know you're a big proponent for you know, helmet safety and, and whatnot for skateboarders, but what are your views on forcing motorcyclists to wear helmets? I think that they should. I think it should be a law because if you're going 60 miles an hour and they normally go faster on the highway, I think that it's one of those things that if you don't have a helmet, that's a serious problem. They normally just wear leather jackets and sometimes you can even see them in just t-shirts. So they should force motorcyclists to wear helmets. The Duke of Edinburgh Award, okay. <laughs> I'm going to receive this award very soon and I'm not sure if I'm getting it on stage here or if I'm getting it on the Miss America stage. My Miss Connecticut of last year, 2011, Morgan Amaron, she set it up so we could receive this award. What the reward is, is we partnered with the Duke of Edinburgh for this award 
due to the fact that it encompasses all of the parts of the pageant that we love to focus on. So we have the community service. We made cards for our soldiers overseas. We did fitness. We <laughs> just Zumba'd for an hour and a half straight. That was a little crazy, but it was definitely fun. So it's one of those things that I enjoyed doing. There are quite a few high schools across the country that are wanting to implement special technology in football helmets. Do you think it's appropriate that we take this kind of do we need to take such drastic measures to protect our high school players as putting special technology in their helmet to prevent con concussions and brain injuries and things like that? Do you mean technology in the fact that it's like helping them stay protected exactly. more, not just like technology like, oh, I can talk to you uh, while you're uh, in the, on the field? Yeah. <laughs> I think that it's very important to improve our helmet and pads. My, a friend of mine is a hockey player, and he showed me his old hockey helmet that he used to wear had no padding on the inside. It had no fa face cage. It's one of those things that he now wears a huge helmet and a huge fa face cage, and you need to keep improving on something. It's like cars. They come out with new fun things every time that a car comes out. Did you get off Mount Etna before it erupted? I did. <laughs> Thank God. I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Yes, we were in Italy and it erupted and we saw it and we were like, oh, we were up there just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. You like to professionally sing. Do you think rap and hip hop sends the wrong message to today's youth? I do think so. I think that music should be an inspirational thing and something that touches people in a way that it makes them happy and not like, you know, I'm all angsty. Mm -mm. <laughs> what about the I believe in if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So, so what do you think about Adele, though, who, who is so very popular and her music is so beautiful and it is angst-ridden. It's, it's about losing boyfriends and all sorts of craziness. It's true. It's like Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that I think that one should be able to express themselves, but at the same time, I don't want to be hearing about all of this negativity all of the time, so I try to surround myself with positive energy. Why is it, do you think, that music today is not as fun as it used to be years ago? I'm not exactly sure of that. I'm not really sure of, I think that our generation is growing up too fast, mostly, and that we're focusing on trying to be adults right away, and I think that we need to enjoy being kids. I think that the biggest issue facing our generation today is peer pressure and self-confidence issues because if you are pressured into doing something and you're not confident, it's one of those things that you just go with it and you're like, oh, I'm going to be part of a group, I'm going to make friends, but you really have to stand against it. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you on stage. Oh, thank you. Thank you.